Hey, hey, everybody. How's it going again? Well, it's Carpo. And uh, I'm going to pose a question to start this video off. And you can pause it and think about this. You know, our morals, our sense of right and wrong, are those something that are, is learned? Or is it something that is inherent within humankind? After thinking about this question for a long time, I mean, on and off, I've always assumed that morals were something that we learned in society by our peers, by our friends, and that our values and morals about life and what's important come from our culture. And there was a study done by a guy who traveled to 100, uh, 140 countries or something, and he interviewed people from around the world, and they did this big project where they asked what was most important to people. And they found that there were seven things that actually morality, rule, morality rules for people. Um, one was help family. Two was to help your group or community. <clears throat> Three was to return favors to people. Um, number four was be brave, which comes in many different forms. Be bold. Um, defer to superiors which a lot of people would probably disagree. A lot of people who are very independent who think I don't have superiors, but there are always experts within our communities, whether it be our elders, our priests, whoever it might be. Um, and divide, divide resources fairly, which is what I'm going to be tapping into here, and to respect others' property, which this all is basically just tribalism, of course, but the question is... Uh, this is where I come, you know, come in with the big question here is, do we respect other people's property if they have an unfair share? There is a very strong feeling of inequality in the world. We know this. By 99.9% .9 of the people who feel like they're treated unfairly or don't have an equal slice of the pie. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I ha it, if there's unfairness within a society, people build resentment. And so people rise up, and so they're quashed by larger forces that have the means to oppress the people. And that's the world we're living in right now. <clears throat> so, here's the question. Is stealing a bad thing? Well, that's... I, I wanted to start off by comparing us to animals, because in my search for understanding humans, I know that I'm biased in my own viewpoints because I can only think through my mind, right? And other humans can only think through their minds and what they know. In other words, you can't judge and study consciousness of humans if you are a human. But you can look at other animals. You can ask, what do animals do in their natural state when they're not affected by having to pay or taxes or worrying about, you know, uh, whether or not somebody, you know, likes you or breaking up with a spouse, you know, all these different things people go through affect them strongly because we want simplicity. We want consistency in our lives. It's this homeostasis. We want our body to stay the same, our lives to stay the same. And as much as we do enjoy change sometimes, we, we like consistency. It helps us survive. So when somebody comes along that, say, breaks that consistency, um, I should, I should start off by finishing my thought there. Animals steal from one another, and I've been really curious about this, because I'm actually fascinated with corvid family, which are ravens, blue jays, scrub jays, uh, magpies, and a few others. Uh, corvids are the most intelligent birds in the world, as far as we know. Um, they put parrots to shame. I mean, they, these birds will f do things like dig a hole and bury a rock, pretending like they're hiding a nut in order to distract another bird so they can go get the real one. Um, uh, birds are known to cache and stash their nuts in like dozens of different places, if, up to like 35 different places for one bird, and they know where each one is. And other birds have no problem stealing this. So we're talking about the most intelligent birds, even though they're in the same group, they will steal nuts from one another, they will steal nest material from one another, and then they might squabble a little bit about it and just get back to work and do their thing. And I really thought about this after these studies were done wondering about fairness within animal packs. And dogs are the perfect example. Wolves and wolf packs and coyotes as well. If somebody takes more than their share, they will be reprimanded. And I've always found that interesting because 
animals seem to have an inherent sense of value and morals. So back to the initial question, is our morals something that is learned or something that we're born with? It turns out that there's a certain particular part of the brain, I don't know if it's the colossum, there's some, there's, there's some area that they did a study where they would put people, put a high, um, a highly magnetic field at one part of the brain. And it turned out by doing that, the people were completely functional, except for their value judgments were impaired. And they thought something was okay, even though it was actually something that is morally wrong within our society. And I found that fascinating, because I thought, is that a driving part of the brain? Is that like something that we're born with? Because, I mean, I'd have to do a little more study in order to give you the, the, the biggest details, but um, it was really interesting because it turns out that maybe we are born with a moral center, if you will, and I would not be surprised. And so the question is, how do we know when we're doing the right thing, when some people steal from others and feel no guilt about it and others feel guilt? I'm an honest person. I try to be as honest as I can. I don't steal from people. I don't cheat. And when I made a video a while back, I said the only kind of people I really don't like in this world are, are cheaters and liars and thieves. Well, I did some thinking about this. I was like, you know, I believe in Robin Hood, okay, to, for lack of a better description. Um, here's the thing. If somebody is taking, there will always be inequality as far as resources and how much people have. This is the same in the animal kingdom, if, depending on which types of animals there are. Um, in other words, we can't expect every single human being to have the same clothes, the same food, the same car, the same amount of money. That's ridiculous. So there will always be variety and, and variation in wealth, which is actually a normal, um, a, a normal thing in this society. The problem is that <clears throat> Humans don't have the same abilities to acquire wealth and land as they once did. You know, this idea that you can just work hard and get rich is complete bullshit for most people. Because if you're born in a poorer area, you usually die poorer. Um, and what we have now is family wealth, consolidated family wealth, which has been passed down, you know, through generations. And this wealth was obtained by taking more than one human's fair share of the land and depleting the resources for future economies and future groups of people like the millennial generation of today which have very valid complaints about how the baby boomers uh, how this okay boomer generation really did frivolously waste away um, many of the resources that we had not just natural resources but financial going off the gold standard uh, the inc the average wage the actual real wage for Americans has not risen since the 70s okay it has been stagnant. It only keeps up with inflation barely, but it hasn't increased. And the reason for this is more consolidation of wealth over the last 20 years, instead of the, you know, uh, the top 10%, uh, 20% having all the wealth, it was the top 10%, the top 0.01%. And we've all heard the stories. So the reason I'm bringing this into up is, uh, what, I want to turn all the golf courses into homeless camps. <laughs> of course, that's absurd. I'm kidding. But I'm not. Uh, the golf course to me is actually the perfect example of frivolous, wasteful land use and a waste of resources for some rich white man's game. Yeah, black people play golf, Mexicans play golf, whatever. That's not the point. The point is only wealthy people can afford to actually, you know, buy these huge, you know, these these houses on these these plots. The rest of the world sees this and just says, wow, this person's out of touch. So. What happens when a person's acquired several billion dollars worth of wealth and they don't share it with anybody? And you know all money comes from resources. And let's say this person's acquired several homes. Um, you know what's going on in San Francisco right now is just disgusting. I mean, the people who have lived there their whole lives and worked there can't afford to live anymore. They're packed into housing and then there's regulations on how many people can live in one house. So you have to live in your fucking car or on the side of the street. And a lot of people don't realize it's not just the high price of housing, which has gone up like 10 times in the last decade. It's the fact that Chinese investors, foreign investors are buying properties in San Francisco and not even living there, just buying them as investments. And so all these houses are laying empty while people are living on the streets. This is when the society starts to tip the, tip the scales to say, wait a minute, something's wrong here. 
um, the, the more wealthy a person becomes, a group becomes, the more they isolate themselves. And I realize I got away from, it seems like I may have got away from my original intention about morals here, but not at all. And this is all part of the same story. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I can say I don't support thievery or stealing, but I wouldn't mind if um, the resources that are available were spread equally among the people. Because it's not just that anybody can go out and get what they want. There are patent trolls out there and, and uh, companies that will sue your ass for uh, even trying to start a business that may be similar to theirs. There's protection for the large companies and for the individuals who have the power. Um, and I was reading earlier about frivolous lawsuits. There have been recent you know, lawsuits over everything from a patent on a computer that sends an informational text to another person. People can actually patent things like this and then sue the creators of email or people who actually invent things, and most people just pay them off. When you see all this money and time wasted like this, it's hard not to just throw in the towel and not want to give a shit. So back to the millennials in this generation, you know, they're told, work hard, go to college, you know, that you need to invest in yourself. You need to make sure that you go to college because that's how you're going to earn your, your living. And now they found out that they were completely lied to. You know, the cost of college tuition has gone through the roof. It's the second biggest burden on people's finances next to mortgages. And, um, and the jobs aren't going to be there, you know? So people are pissed. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. And I guess maybe I'm just saying, you know, you've got to take back your own power. The f when we talk about the 0.01% having all the wealth, doesn't that mean that the majority of the people are the ones who are suffering? In other words, the, the people can take back, they can take back their wealth. I'm not talking about stripping people bare from everything they have or starting riots or anything like that. I'm saying that people need to speak up louder if they want to get results. I mean, everybody just laughed. A lot of people just laughed at the Occupy Wall Street movement as just, oh, look at them, a bunch of dirty hippies sitting out there for a year. You know, these are people who have been fucked by the system and they're standing with their fellow man and then people are just dismissing them, you know, as, well, protesters. When the protester becomes the enemy, this is no different than what's happened in the past when the Pinkertons, the security force, came and shot down a whole bunch of people who were protesting for fair wages. And uh, many of these labor movements were quashed because the minute you try to unionize, you know, it was like Tesla workers wanted to unionize, unionize and uh, basically, you know, uh, I think it was, I can't remember, but it was Elon Musk said something along the lines of, no, they don't want to unionize, you know, they don't need that, it's not good for the company, and what it means is it's not good for the bottom line. And I'm so sick of hearing about the bottom line, progress, moving forward, making a better economy. It's not working for the people. It, we'd been told consistently that everyone can be part of this and prosper, but it, it doesn't show. People say, work harder. Well, I work 50 hours, 60 hours, 70 hours work, work weeks to get where I am. There's people working 70 hours a week that can't even pay their goddamn rent, you know? And one other aspect is, you know, these people, there was a something, an article I read about Harvard and how, and how the rich people don't pay their share and, and don't care about their fellow man. And it was these plaques in the Harvard College which basically have all the people who have gone to the school who have fought and died for their country. And if you go back to World War II, there's a whole list of people. I think one of uh, Kennedy's relatives one of the, and one of the other president's sons or uh, grandsons or something who died in the war. People who had wealth used to go out and fight for their country and because they cared. And I'm not saying I support war. I'm just saying... A lot of people talk about being patriotic and loving your country, but they wouldn't dare send their kids to the front lines. Or, and they will find any way, like, you know, how many presidents have got out of, you know, going to war because they had bone spurs. Do I blame them? Dude, I wouldn't want to go to war either. But the point is, when you move forward in time, Mitt Romney was asked why none of his five sons ran, I guess back in the, you know, years back, and he said, he said, my kids were on the battle on the front lines helping me get elected try to get elected and somebody was pointing out how ridiculously out of touch it is comparing fighting and dying for your country for having people who are 
you know, sending out a bunch of ads and trying to get you elected to president so you can feel powerful. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, the times of the monarchy and the kings, we thought that all this was over, but it never ends. It's just a continual progression of a parading of ridiculousness that we all have to be, uh, like as George Carlin said, we all got a front row seat to the freak show, the circus, you know. And uh, he had no idea how bad it would really get. So uh, a lot of people build a ton of resentment. And if they don't see any results for themselves, the whole society falls apart. And when we're faced with what we're facing right now, uh, it's hard to see positivity. But I'm really trying not to be negative about this, but rather say, if you're poor, you have a legitimate gripe. If you work hard, you should be taken care of in your country. And they make it a war on protesters, a war on welfare, a war on, you know, helping people who need a fucking medical bill paid. You know how many people are afraid to go to the doctor because they can't afford the fucking bill? I'm one of them, okay? I don't have health insurance. I can't even sign up for it because I'm on a cusp and it costs me so much. I wouldn't even, it would be ridiculous. And even if I had it, the, the ridiculous co-pays and uh, the high, it's just not even worth discussing that here. But I'm just saying we're all part of this and we're all, most. I'm sure most of you are probably affected by all of this too. And many of you probably more so than I am. Um, so why would millennials, millennial aged people, have any reason to want to participate in an economy that they know the jobs are going away, that they, that they know they can't pay their bills, and that they're basically just being treated like shit? And I'm, yeah, I'm standing up for the millennials because, you know, I joke around about, you know, different age groups. It's not age groups. Ageism is a foolish notion. But there are certain characteristics within each age group that defines the generation these people grew up in. And in today's world, it's very chaotic for the average kid. And I feel horrible. I've got three kids, you know. One's tw one, I have a millennial aged kid. He's, well, he's 25. He's maybe even, you know, a little past that. Who knows? But then I got two two younger kids at seven and ten and they're gonna grow up in a who knows what kind of world and I just hope it's a good one I hope that we can you know pull our heads out of our asses we will adapt that's what humans do but can we do better now by redistributing wealth would it work would it make any difference or are there no resources available like there's so much waste out there you know <clears throat> and one of the saddest things is that the rich don't want to be taxed. There's 32 trillion in offshore accounts. They say 25% of all America's money is held in offshore accounts in tax-free havens uh, for the wealthy. And Warren Buffett himself complained and said, he should tax me more. Now, Warren Buffett, I respect. Uh, he said he gets taxed at 17.5%. His and he makes a bill, you know, he's got billions. His secretary makes 60,000 a year and she gets taxed at 30 something percent. He said that she, you know, that's, I mean, it's just wrong. It's absolutely wrong. Um, last thing I'd like to say is that the poor statistically give more to charity. So the idea that, you know, uh, that, I don't know, it's 20 years ago, they said that the, the, it was maybe 40 years ago, I think, actually, that the 40 years ago, the, 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 the difference in the wealth gap between a CEO and the average worker in their company was something like 20 to 1, which is still a lot more money, but hey, they're the CEO. Uh, 20 years later, that turned into 100 to 1. And today, last time I read, it stands at the average CEO makes 357 to 1. 357 times more than you do working for the company. So you ask yourself, is your boss worth it? It's not for you to judge, but as I say, they're continuously protected not just CEOs, but these huge corporations who, you know, the patent trolls who sue other companies for things that they're actually innovating. And the average consumer is being held down by laws, by taxes, by bureaucracy. And we're told that all these things are going to help us. So back to stealing. Is stealing bad? I guess it depends on how it's carried out. Birds steal from one another, but if it goes too far, they fight it out. These days, you could be stolen from, and you can't even do anything to protect yourself you're being stolen from through channels that you have no control over whether it be over taxation or uh, just simple you know theft by a, a huge company that steals your fee, you know nickels and dimes you through fees people are sick of it and so I really just wanted to bring that out you know and 
I'm going to make a part two to this, but I just wanted to get that part out. Uh, and we'll get down, we'll, we'll get down to business in the next one too, because I have a few more things to say. So otherwise my camera is going to run out of space and then I'm going to have to like splice it together and edit it. And you all know I don't care for editing. So peace and out. Talk to you later.